Yeah. We got hella questions to get to, so roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano The Third. Y'all guys are The Third Family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you like what you see at the end of the video, consider becoming part of the family, clicking the subscribe button bottom right-hand corner. But that's probably irrelevant to this because if you're here, it's because you probably asked me a question or you're already subscribed to the channel and want to see the Q&A. Oh, before we get started, my homeboy that I plugged during the Juice World, during the Juice World reaction, the last one, I forgot I got matching shorts for the same shit. So if you're on that shit, get up on it, envisionclothing.com, envisionco.com, I believe. I'll leave the link again. But what I was gonna say is normally when it comes to the questions that I answer on Q and A's, I normally leave them up to Discord and guaranteed questions answered on Patreon. I leave the Q and A's up to those two platforms because it's like, yo, you're like a little more invested than the normal subscriber if you're on Discord and you're definitely invested more, especially like literally monetarily invested into the channel if you're on if you're on Patreon. But because 100,000 subscribers is the obviously more than just the people on Discord and on Patreon, I was like, yo, I'm gonna let anybody ask anything and we're gonna try to do this like, we're gonna try to get every single question answered. I'm gonna try to get to virtually every single question and if I don't answer your question, it's because more than likely there was one that was already answered or there was multiple people who had the same question, so I just answered one to get all of them out of the way. But, you know, there's only one way to knock the shit out and that's to actually do it. I right, let go. And before we get started, actually, if your name is not not like a common type of name, 100% chance I'm gonna butcher that shit. So just be ready for that. 252 questions, just an explosion. What's the worst song that you've reacted to in your opinion? I, for I, I forgot the names of the tracks, that's how bad they were, but I remember specifically actually just NF's like very first song that they told me to react to in Discord. I think somebody even like on the Patreon side was like, yo, react to this. And I was like, yo, that shit is whack, but it's dope to see where he came from to be the artist that he is now. The growth is like out of this world. But I would definitely say that track, I don't even remember, it's like off of his Moments album before he was even signed to a record label. By far, probably the worst track I've ever, ever reacted to. That's not gonna make a lot of NF fans happy, especially being the first question, but it is what it is. Underscore three three. Do you listen to any YouTube rappers? I don't really listen to YouTube rappers. There are YouTube rappers that I think that are good, like off of the platform, or that would sound good off of the platform. Probably the one that comes to mind the fastest for me is gonna be King Blitz, especially with his, especially with his Cipher Volume Three. His his verse of that, I was like, yo, this shit is actually like off YouTube good. There's always that doubt in the back of my mind with YouTube rappers because they're good on, they're, they're like great. They have, their skill set is honed, but in terms of being a commercial success, I don't see a lot of YouTube rappers being that. They're lacking something in their writing. They're lacking something in their image. They're lacking something in their personality. They just don't have the X factor. But if anybody did, I would say it's King Blitz. Next, Bucky KG. Who's your favorite artist at the moment? I'm actually like in my R&B vibes right now. So I would say, I would probably say Snow Allegra is my favorite artist right now. She's actually dropping a new single like on Friday. So I'm, I'm hyped. It's probably gonna be a reaction to be honest. Her voice is amazing. She's extremely attractive. She's just, she's just got it all. It's like that lo-fi R&B type vibe. Spring Scare? Springs Care. Who's your favorite artist to react to? Edit, who's corrected himself? I appreciate that. I'm kind of a grammar stickler. Stickler, see? Grammar stickler. Probably gotta be 21 Pilots because you never know what the hell you're gonna get with them. And their songs and their videos have a lot of like, especially with the most recent album, Trench, they have a lot of like inter intertwining symbolism. There's a whole storyline going on, but definitely I would say 21 Pilots. Salah Eddin. Do you think about starting a podcast, interviewing rappers, songwriters, movie directors, I think it suits you as an interviewer. I love your work. I don't know about like a, a, a podcast because I kind of like the video format and I like the YouTube format. I would, like one of my goals is that hopefully I could get enough subscribers, enough subscribers to be able to like go to South by Southwest, the music conference in Austin. Music conference, it's like a multimedia music tech festival. I was hoping that to like get big enough, like maybe 250,000 subscribers where I could go to like the, to, to the people who put it on and be like, yo, give me some passes. Is I want to walk around the grounds and just interview people like, yo, hey, who are you here to see? Yada, 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 and just make a video. And then I also have an idea in my mind for like a dope video concept, but I don't want to like give it away because it does require COVID to be over and I don't want anybody jacking my shit. But I have a dope ass concept for interviewing people on the street. Just know that. So once COVID is over, that's gonna happen on the channel, regardless if I get to South by Southwest. Gonzalo Ortega, not gonna fuck that name up, Hispanic. Who is the most underrated lyricist that you listen to? 
Oof. YBN Cordae, most underrated lyricist. He was, he was nominated for Rap Album of the Year this past year, but no one knows who he is. Download The Lost Boy. That's his most, that's the most recent album that he has. Fire. Vegard, Vegard Haukedal. See, it's what I told you I'm gonna fuck it up. What does music do for you? Is it an escape or is it just background noise? Has it helped you in any way? Keep being 100% best reactor by far. I appreciate it and music, it, it, it's everything. It's background noise when I want it to be background noise, but, uh, but like 99% of the time, it's not that. It's gonna be like, I'm actually listening. I'm actually trying to like understand what the artist is saying and trying to understand where they're coming from. But music for me is just like anybody else. It helps me get through certain times if I'm down, it helps me get hyped if I'm trying to get hype, it helps me vibe out if I'm trying to just chill. Next, PewDiePie says, hey, Pewds, I appreciate you, bro. I'm part of the 19-year-old army. Would you rather only listen to rap or listen to anything you want except rap? And then someone under that said, good one. That's a hella good one, actually. I would probably say only rap because it's just rap is such a diverse, it's such a diverse genre. There's so many subgenres within rap that like, even if you're listening to rap, it might, it's barely hanging on like as a rap song. Like a lot of Juice World songs, they're, they're, they're more R&B than they're rap. Black, like Six Lack, the way it's spelled, Black the artist, his songs are like R&B, but they're more like, they're more like trap rap R&B. So that kind of blurs the lines between rap and R&B. So I would probably say rap only because it has the most, it has the most range. Good question though. That's like, that's a tough like conundrum type question. Ty, or thank you, 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 however you say it. What do you think are the top three greatest rappers of all time? List them one, two, three. There's no way I don't like that question is so hard to answer. There's no way that I could honestly answer that question because it depends on what you call top three greatest rappers of all time. Are we talking about lyricism? Because then it would probably be like Lupe Fiasco, Andre 3000, and then like, I, I don't even know who the top three would be because there's so many in there. Or if we're not talking about lyricism, if we're talking about like cultural influence, then it's a whole nother different list. It's like number one would be Kanye West, hands down, the number one greatest influencer, not even just musically, just all around creatively of our generation. We're not gonna see anybody else like Kanye West. And then if we're talking about like commercial success, then Drake is number one. Like doesn't matter what you say or what you think about Drake as an artist, he is probably gonna be the biggest artist of our generation as well. And that's across every single genre. When it comes to commercial success, you can put a finite number on it. So it's not like, it's not even a debate. The, the data doesn't lie and Drake is way the fuck up here. But I hope that kind of gives you a little insight into who I think are the top three greatest rappers if you put them in their, if you put them in their categorical order. Edu Godoy, Edu Godoy, one of those, who is the artist slash musician slash band that inspires you the most with their music. Right now, I would probably say 21 Pilots only because they, they literally do whatever they want. Their talent allows them to go wherever in music. And that's an extremely rare quality for an artist to have. And even when an artist has it, it's extremely rare that the fan base is big enough and the fan base is loyal enough to back them for them to go wherever they want in music. So I think that that's very, I think that that's very admirable. And I think that that speaks volumes for who they are as people. Like even the Heathen song, like they were approached by the producers of Suicide Squad to make a song for the movie. And they were like, nah, we're gonna make our song. And if it happens to fit the movie, then so be it. And then that's when they made Heathen. And it's, and it's totally 21 Pilots without being about suicide, a suicide Squad, but it's totally about Suicide Squad at the same time. Like that's ex the, to be able to like flirt that line and to be able to go right down the center when people are trying to fork, they're trying to make you choose a path at the fork in the road and they just go completely straight. That's dope. Lucas Celeste, Lucas, you've been a, f boy, you've been an OG, you've been an OG on the channel. I know, I know that name from very beginning. Appreciate you. What's your favorite NF song? It flirts between two only and if you want love. Hands down, those are the two. CKC, what artist or genre has the most impact on your personal life? <whistles> genre is probably obviously hip hop, but artist, it's probably Will Smith to be honest because he was my introduction into rap. And then obviously it's all it's all in the history books at that point. Here we're sitting at 105,000 subscribers all because of Eminem and Will Smith before him. Ben O3 Beast, what's your favorite or top three albums of all time? <laughs> Yo, see, these are questions that are probably like video worthy because I want to give an entire explanation as to why they fit right there. So I'll answer that question and I'll answer questions like that, probably with like a dedicated video, like my top five album. So I'm not ignoring your question. I'm just pushing it off because it requires a deeper answer than that. AJ Taylor, if you could have one career slash job for the rest of your life and make a ton of, a ton of money from it, what would it be? <laughs> 
You're watching it happen as we speak, fam. I would love to just make videos nonstop, like on YouTube, to be like direct connection, direct connection with the audience. That's one thing that like, when I was really heavy into Casey Neistat vlogs, when he was like doing like the daily vlogs, he kind of showed the light as to why YouTube is as big of a platform as it is. It's because there's a direct connection with the audience and with the person and with the person who's making the videos. There's no middleman, there's nobody else that has any say. And that's dope because it allows me to connect with like all of y'all, all across across the world. So if I could make a sustainable amount of money and sustainable amount of money in my eyes is quite a lot, then I would 100% go full time on YouTube and then photography probably like portraiture. Zayden53, what you listening to that you don't react to? Psh, yo, there's so much that I listen to and I don't react to. Big Crit is a huge, is someone huge in my rotation. He's one of the most underrated rappers psh, probably ever, especially coming from the South, but of all time. We got Tame Impala, we got pretty much all house music. Like I'm, I don't show it on the channel, but I'm really big into like EDM. Cascade, I listen, hella Cascade actually. One of my favorite songs ever is Raise Your Weapon by Dead Mouse. Brooklyn Hallett, Brooklyn Hallett, Hallett? What song was most important in your development when you were a teenager? Teenager, teenager, what was going on in teenager years? I would probably say not an individual song, but I would probably say Incubus's Make Yourself album. And then I would also say Eminem Show. I know you asked for songs, but there's no way that I can narrow it down. Jet Scheme, who's the most underrated artist you found? Again, probably YBN Cordae. I would say Denzel Curry, but Denzel Curry doesn't like to be called under underrated because he feels like the motherfuckers that he wants to listen to his music, they found him, they already know he has him. But YBN Cordae for sure. Minty Guy, what's your favorite song by The Weeknd? I've answered this question hella times on Instagram and on here on Q and A's, but I'm gonna answer it every single fucking time because it's my favorite Weeknd song, 28. This house is not a home to you, but you decide to go ahead and lay down, lay down. Yo. <sighs> my hair was pissing me off. I got this little fucking band thing. It'll probably looks like shit, but fuck it. Next, we got Paralaz, Paralaz. Would you rather have free unlimited first class tickets to travel any part of the world or would you be able to eat anywhere for free? Boy, if I had the option to have free first class tickets anywhere, fuck the reactions. We just transformed into a vlog channel, fam. Travel vlogger, 100%. I don't care if I gotta eat McDonald's everywhere that I go. The shit's worldwide, I could find it somewhere. Next, Sofa, Sofa. Love seat, have y'all met before? Whoa, sorry, Beaker, my bad. Congrats on 100K, I appreciate you. This is a bit deep, but how do you feel knowing that you're starting to inspire other people and starting to become an influencer? <laughs> Are there any goals that you want to accomplish with this quote unquote power? Any lessons that you would wanna pass on? Goals to accomplish, I would love to be able to like, I would love to be able to actually talk to these artists that I like, that I react to and maybe like interview them backstage at certain tours or get backstage at certain events like South by Southwest here in Texas in Austin. And in terms of me being an influencer like if I find if I had a million subscribers on YouTube I still wouldn't personally see myself as an influencer like yeah I, I fit the definition because I have a lot of eyeballs on me but I'm still gonna be me and really if there's anything that I could pass on to people who are trying to do this or pass on to people in general it's just like be you I'm not at a million I'm not at 200,000 I just passed 100,000 the growth rate for me even though people are growing faster that's fine. I am who I am. I make the videos that I make for the people who want to see them. If I made a video in another way or in another format or much shorter, or I didn't give explanation or I just reacted, just not in my head. Like that's not that's not the way I partake in music. So it would seem it would seem like I'm just making videos just to get the views and just to get the subscribers. I want y'all to come to my videos for my like input and my breakdown and analysis on what I think because that means y'all are here for what I'm saying and not here for me just like my facial reaction to what's happening on screen. I'm not knocking anybody that does that because you know there's some good vibes out there. It's just we're chilling. It's like we're chilling listening to music together. But me, when I listen to music, that's not how I listen to music. I listen to music fully in depth. So that's why the videos are fully in depth. If I could influence anybody to be anything, it would be themselves because that's, that's how I got to where I'm at, being me. Kyler Dickinson, what do you think the best decade of all was for music? Obviously, if you're talking about like individually, I'm probably going to say my adolescent period and that's what most people are going to tell you because that's kind of when they're developing their personality their brain
breaking away from their parents. They're kind of rebelling. They're trying to they're trying to be who they want to be, not who their parents want them to be. But if I'm being objective and we're talking about just like the importance of music, I would probably obviously say the 80s. And everybody's gonna say the 80s is the best the best time in music history. You know, the music was the best. Fuck no, the music was not the best in the 80s. A lot of 80s music is fucking trash. But 80s is when the technological revolution and like the computer and the computer era, like like desktop computers was happening. You could make music in a completely different way. It was no longer just analog, which changed the way music was made. Next, I am definitely not gonna say your name because I don't wanna get canceled. N-I-G, Juice, two. <laughs> favorite Logic song, favorite Barba from Logic. You think No Pressure will be his comeback album. It better be his comeback album, fam. I don't think, and not that I don't think it will, he, he doesn't have an option. And I couldn't tell you my favorite bar, I think it's in Fucking With Me Now, or not that that's not the name of the song, the song is now, but I think it's in that. But my favorite song is definitely gang related, 100%. Robbie Hobbs, do you ever see NF beefing with anyone? If so, who? Nah, not really. NF is kind of like, we have the rap genre. NF is like in a world of his own. Like he's rap, but like he's not part of the rap community. Community. NF's like, NF's weird when it's, I don't know how to explain it. He's he's a rapper. He's more part of like the 21 Pilots community more so than he is the rap community. He's so out of what normal rap context is and his fan base is so loyal that he doesn't even have to be over here. So I don't see anybody ever beefing with NF just because it would seem really forced. Like you're just gonna have some random ass rapper like jump all the way to where NF is and make a song beef. Like it just, it would just seem to like, it would basically seem like YouTube beef. Like when I see YouTube beef, I go, Again, this shit again. Who's who's listening to this? Three years in a row, the same dudes. Don't beef if ten days later you're gonna make it a collab and then squashing the beef. That's not the way it works. Next, I actually got a question from my friend. She DM me, Bianca. She says, and I. This is this is funny just because the relationship that we have. It's like she says favorite bar of all time. And the problem is I don't know if she's asking like jokingly, like same bar, like rap bar, or if she's asking jokingly and using the wordplay like literally drinking bar. But I'm gonna give you both answers. I would probably say favorite drinking bar 210 baby south you know where i you know where i stay same city same friends if you're looking for me but then also favorite rap bar is probably by lupe fiasco because it's in my mind it's like an extremely deep thought-provoking bar and i'm going to tell you the whole thing here and then i'm going to break it down really quickly because i could go really in depth with just this like it's not even a bar, it's like a whole like stanza, I guess you would say. He says, my rap position was black condition and activism, ammunition for abolition mission attacking systems. Like literally his rap position, the way he writes raps, it's to like enlighten you to break the mold, to break the stigma. Specifically African-Americans try to like, try to show that their main art form, that hip hop, it could actually mean something when you write meaningful lyrics. Black condition, activism, ammunition for abolition, like abolishing the way people see certain mentalities. And he says, but they're not apt to listen, less is dropping on Activision. They're so brainwashed and, and their focus is on all these digital aspects. It's on the computer, it's on TV, it's on all this meaningless entertainment, video games. Activision is a video game studio house. So they're not gonna listen to you because it doesn't matter what you say unless you're dropping it on something that they're taking, that they're taking in content. Then he says, are we apps or are we bodies filled with apparitions? Like, are we just, are we the apps that we play with? Is that who we are? Is, are we structuring our personality around that? Are we actually bodies filled with apparitions? Like, do we actually have souls deep down? Operating applications stuck inside an Apple prison. Like we're just, we're stuck in this, and stu and stuck in this box, stuck on this computer screen. The average person checks their phone like once every like 10 seconds or something like that. Operating applications stuck inside an Apple prison, chicken hacking download updates that lack religion or are we more? Like, are we more than everything that I just listed? Are we more than just mindless bodies that are shaped by the world, that are shaped by the media and the way that they want to shape us? And chicken hacking was something that you used to do to a PSP. You would like be able to unlock just the way that people unlock unlock iPhones back in the day. So that way they have more power and they have they could do more with it. Chicken hacking was kind of the same, was kind of the same thing for the PSP. And obviously lack religion because when this song was made back in like 2014, I think it was, like religion was kind of seen, it was kind of like petering out. So there's a lot to digest right there. Like that, those eight bars those four six bars and when you hear it on the song he's like spitting it so fast like when he says it in the song this is basically how he says it my rap position was black condition and activism ammunition for abolition mission attacking systems but they not apt to listen unless it's dropping on activision are we apps or are we bodies filled with apparition operating applications stuck inside an apple prison chicken hacking download updates that lack religion or 
are we more? Like, that's fire. But that's your answer to both questions, ma'am. And everybody that's watching this right now, this woman right here is making her first YouTube channel. And I'm putting it out there in the world because she always tells me, put those positive vibes, like, like bring that positivity into fruition, put out what you want to receive. So I'm putting it out for you, ma'am. You can't bitch out now. Or should I say again? Because I'm going to be mentioning it until you actually do it. But thanks for the question though, ma'am. Next, we got Top. I'm assuming this is a 21 Pilots fan and not actually the Ben. What do you think? Does God exist? And what beliefs do you have on that theme? Love your videos. I'm obviously Hispanic. Hispanics are mainly Catholic. When it comes to religion, even from the very beginning, I'm like, religion is, is saying something like of a higher entity, of a higher being. Jesus Christ did exist. I do believe in God. I do believe that something bigger is out there. Like I'm obviously Catholic. I believe in Catholic religions, Catholic Catholicism. I believe in like the, the rules and all that, that that have set forth. And I'm not writing off other religions and what they think because at the end of the day, the religions by fo were formed by human beings and human beings are imperfect. So how can I expect their religion to be 100% perfect when it was written by someone who has imperfections? You know what I'm saying? That's my stance. I believe and follow the Catholic rules and religion, but I'm not writing off Christianity. I'm not writing off Judaism. I'm not writing off Buddhists. I'm not writing off atheists. I'm not right. Like believe whatever you want to believe, especially in the United States, it's a free country. Terrence Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton. If you haven't seen that play and that's your last name, Get the fuck out. But you say, do you consider yourself a gamer? If so, what games do you usually play and on what consoles? Great question. I don't consider myself a gamer because I don't have a lot of time to actually like dive into video games. I play three main games. I play Call of Duty, The Last of Us, and I haven't downloaded The Last of Us 2 and I haven't bought it yet. So obviously if I'm playing The Last of Us, obviously I play on PlayStation since it's PlayStation only. And obviously PlayStation's better than Xbox. We all know that, come on now. But those two games and then another PlayStation exclusive, MLB The Show. Phoenix fire. Do you have a good relationships with your family? And do you know how to quote unquote fix a relationship? If that question is not appropriate, then what would you tell an aspiring rapper to work on most? First off, questions mad appropriate. It's Q&A. Whatever you want to ask, I'm answering. But I'll answer both. What would I tell aspiring rappers to work on? Your fucking pen game. Make the pen game strong because that's what stands out. Listen to other rappers. Listen to what you like and don't like about other rappers and, and form your own style. And in terms of do I have a good relationship with my family? I actually have a very excellent relationship with most of my family. My entire family is divorced. Literally every single marriage in my family has basically gone through divorce. And for the most part, everybody like is cordial and friendly. I, I think I've said it on the channel before, but my dad and my mom who are divorced they like get along real well and they've been remarried and my stepmom gets along with my mom and then my mom's husband gets along with my dad and then the step parents get along with each other grandparents as well they're divorced and the grandparents all it's just like it's about as good of a situation that you could potentially ask for from divorce and in terms of do i know how to fix a relationship the main thing that i would say when it comes to fixing a relationship is understanding whether or not the person that you're trying to fix the relationship with is actually willing to put in the work or wants to fix the relationship. Basically, don't give yourself any more pain by trying to fix something that somebody else doesn't want fixed. Ryan Ojeda. We see you react to a lot of male artists. I'm kind of curious as to who some of your favorite, favorite female artists are. I react to a lot of male artists because there's not a whole lot of female rappers currently. I know everybody's gonna say Snow the product and I know I, know I haven't got to her and I've been meaning to, so obviously she's in there but in terms of female artists that i listen to jesse reyes her album is in high rotation right now for me snow allegra again high in rotation for me i'm actually a fan of janae Aiko or Jan however you say the f how the fuck you say her name i'm a fan of alina baraz i'm a fan of adele there's a lot of people that i actually listen to that are females they're just they're just not rap and normally the channel is mainly rap but i definitely want to do get into some female even if it's r&b even if it is snow allegra or even if it is like everybody on the last track was like yo you need to do halsey all right i'll do it Pavel Pavel Crandall. I hope that's pronounced right. What got you interested in things such as camera angles and how it affects overall music video and feel? What made me actually get into it was starting this YouTube channel. It made me understand how to edit. It made me understand pace to edit. It made me understand lens selection. It made me understand the difference between telephoto and wide and how, I mean, I already knew the difference because I was already into photography before, but translating from photography into video was not as easy as you would think. You have to stumble and you have to learn 
learn. And once you learn, and once you learn how to make like good quality content, I guess I would say like vlog wise for me, just getting into YouTube and, and learning and stumbling through all of that, that had me have a great appreciation for all music video angles and all those kind of things. You know what? I'm not trying to make a two hour long question and answer. I plan on answering all of these questions because anybody who's responding to my, to my community tab is a little more invested than just your normal subscriber. And I wanna like show everybody love. So I'll probably make like one part one, part two, part three, maybe even part four. I wanna be able to do it to where I get all questions answered. So I'm gonna stop this one right here, be on the lookout for part two, because I, I plan on having these come out like sequentially back to back to back to back, or at least all within the next like week time frame. But everybody question that I answered so far, I appreciate it. Anybody who I didn't answer, it's probably because your question was already answered earlier, or you asked me something political, and, and that's definitely something that I wanna keep off of this channel. Political viewpoints can be extremely polarizing, especially in 2020, and that's not what my channel is about. So I'm letting you know right now that I will never get into politics on this channel, other than maybe like a politically charged song, and even then I'm not gonna tell you whether I agree or disagree with the song. I'm just gonna give you the breakdown and what, what I think that the artist is trying to say. Because really the main purpose that I see for my channel is helping y'all understand or giving y'all a new perspective on the music that you use to escape the world. So why the hell am I gonna bring all the world's problems into my channel when the channel's meant to keep all that out? You know? But that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, there will be a part two, part three, maybe even part four if it needs it. So stick around for those. I hope you enjoyed this video so far. And like I always say at the very end of all of my videos, go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other, wear your masks, wash your hands. Don't be an idiot and not wear your mask because I know for a fact you would bitch if, if I was talking to you knowing that I was a, somebody who had COVID at one point. You would feel uneasy if I was talking to you with no mask. So don't be a dick and talk to other people with no mask just because you haven't had it. Because if you want to take your mask off, I'll take my mask off and let you know that, hey, I had COVID about a week ago, but we can carry on this conversation with no mask if you want. So love and care for each other, love and care for one another, wear your mask, which goes back to love and care for each other. And I'll see everybody on the next video. Peace.